We see the pivot into shield advantage Mewtwo. The opponent sends out Tapu Fini. Low X going straight for the side strike. Get that Tapu Fini out of here. It's now Cresselia versus the world. Low X still with two protections. Going to start investing them here. We shield at the grass knot. Low X farms up. He's going to fire off the shadow ball. Does the opponent respect the damage? Welcome back to the channel. As you can hear, my voice is incredibly sore today. However, that is not going to stop us featuring new content creator, my good friend Loex. He has recently joined the YouTube community. He's going to be linked in the description down below. Make sure you go show him some support. The leagues are rotating today. Master League is back in rotation and we have the Spring Cup, aka Vigoroff Cup. Yay. We all know the undisputed king of destruction in the Master League is Shadow Mewtwo. So to round out Ultra League, we're going to see this Pokemon in action in the Open Ultra League. Without any further ado, let's get into the battle. And in game one, Loex leads his big pile of gunk. Kanto marked into Trevenant. This opponent doesn't even farm up to the Shadow Ball. Trainer, please learn your typings. They then say switch into Feraligator and Kanto Mark. Going to fire off the super effective Thunder Punch, forcing us early shield advantage. We then see Loex make a very nice catch. Catch and resisted Hydro Cannon onto his own for Alligator and we enter the mirror. We see Loex make a very heads up play, firing off five Shadow Claws and the Hydro Cannon on the CMP tie. We now know we win CMP and that's great information to have. Loex knows he can survive this Hydro Cannon. Again, we can farm up, throw five further Shadow Claws. This not only maximises our energy generation, this also minimises the free farm the return and Trevenant will get. Back out comes Trevenant. The opponent gets two Shadow Claws off, but we send back up. Mark, we're able to outpace to the Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse goes unshielded. Get that Trevenant out of here. My God, that was probably the most pathetic boom I've ever done. But my voice is very sore and we take that game. Heading into the next battle, we see Kanto Mark into Pidgeot. Mark does have that Thunder Punch coverage, which we are going to be able to outpace to. We farm up, fire off the Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch probably force a Protect Shield of these fucking annoying Pidgeot users. Love to shield the first move and then probably debuff us with the Feather Dance. The opponent at a potential Brave Bird. Holy crap. The opponent actually full send and then pivot into Nido Queen. Loex answers this Nido Queen say switch with for Alligator. The opponent fires off the Poison Fang. That's an easy no shield for Gator. Loex again farms up, fires off the Hydro Cannon on the CMP tie. Loex clearly has been to school and knows his counts very well. Loex could shield this move up and commit to the Shadow Claw farm down. However, he actually chooses a tank it, knowing his IVs, knowing he survives. He then fires off the Hydro Cannon at the very last second, minimising the free farm the opponent will get when they return with Pidgeot. Pidgeot only gets one free wing attack and it's now Shadow Mewtwo time. In comes Mewtwo, the opponent able to outpace. This is definitely a Feather Dance, but I guess you can't risk it. Feather Dance has now lowered Mewtwo's attack by two stages, but Shadow Mewtwo hits like a truck. Loex farms up. Fires off the side strike, side strike, still commands a protect shield, and then we see Loex not only make a savage catch, but also reset his debuff. The opponent pivots out into Gyarados. Oof, we need this to one shot. Is a side strike enough to knock out Gyarados? No, it's not. Loex is forced to fire off the double, but I think at this stage we probably get wing attack farm down. Can you two make the side strike? No, we get wing attack farm down and unfortunately we're going to take a heartbreaking loss, but very well played regardless. In the next battle, we see Glissopod in the lead. Another decent matchup for Muck. I think Muck is another one of the unsung heroes of the Ultra League. His coverage of Poison Jab, Thunder Punch and Dark Pulse just hits so many threats for super effective. Low X farms up, fires off the Thunder Punch, Thunder Punch forces a Protect Shield. The opponent going to return fire with the Aerial Ace again. We see Loex unwilling to shield. He knows his IV so, so well. Mark able to withstand the damage. Fire off the Thunder Punch, getting Glissapod into the red. We can now send out Gator. Gator going to get a very nice running start. We are going to have to tank an Aerial Ace in the process or Liquidation. But either way, Aerial Ace is essentially Aerial Ace and Liquidation is resisted. The opponent then sends out Giratina, down a Protect Shield and behind an Energy into for Alligator. Loex fires off the Ice Beam, getting Giratina already into the yellow. We see Loex once again, unwilling to shield Gator. Loex again farms up, throws on the CMP site. Loex's energy management absolutely on point. Ice Beam secures the knockout and we see the simul swap of Mewtwo into Charizard. This game is so over. Loex fires off the side strike. The opponent only with one Protect Shield, choose not to use it. 
which is just going to mean Mewtwo is going to be able to Psycho Cut Farm down, and we're going to take that game. Shadow Mewtwo's damage output is absolutely absurd. You've seen it almost one shot. Two Pokemon with a charge move that only takes 10 turns and costs 45 energy. In the next battle, we see the Battle of Brothers, or perhaps they're more cousins, the Cantonian variant versus the Alolan variant of Mark. This unfortunately is a favoured matchup for the very stripy, funky looking Alolan variant of Mark, and that is because they get same type attack bonus on the neutral Dark Pulses, whereas we're forced to go for non stab Thunder Punches. We see Loex make a very aggressive pivot into for Alligator, but this Mark has so much energy. We see the instant No Shield deployed, the opponent fire off the Acid Spray. What a call! Loex unwilling to play to CMP this time. The opponent falls in the Dark Balls for Alligator. Almost gets knocked out, but able to withstand the damage. Loex fires off the Hydro Cannon. Hydro Cannon does secure the knockout, but that Mark has almost beat the entirety of our team. The opponent sends out Giratina, and Loex says, fuck this, moving swiftly on to the next one. Loex given the opportunity to get some redemption, as this time we see the Giratina altered in the lead position. Again, this is why I really like Mark. We've got access to moves that just hit so much of this meta for super effective. Loex fires off the Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse, despite not getting the same type attack bonus, two shots even from the regular variant. The opponent out here praying to the RNG gods, firing off the ancient powers, fishing for the boost. The RNG gods say, not today, trainer. Loex again fires off the Dark Pulse on the CMP tie, obtaining us early shield advantage. The opponent finally gives up on fishing for the boost, fire off the Dragon Claw, securing the knockout. Loex now sends out Gator. If the opponent doesn't pivot, Gator is going to get a massive Shadow Claw farm down. Gator leaves absolutely loaded. Out comes Polyrath. Loex fires off the Hydro Cannon, looking for the chip and dip, and it is Mewtwo time. Out comes Mewtwo. The opponent stays in, likely looking to debuff our attack, but we're able to outpace the Side Strike. Side Strike forces the opponent's final Protect Shield. This is only an icy win, but we see the instant shield deployed. The Shadow Mewtwo cannot tank a hit for shit. We then see the pivot into the opponent's own for Alligator. They then play to the CMP tie. They do not win. Shout out to Home Slice Henry. Today's top tip is do not play charge attack priority games with Shadow Mewtwo, as you certainly won't be winning unless you're an absolute spice lord, running something like Kartana or attack form Deoxys. Low X putting all his hopes and dreams. On for Alligator, for Alligator rapidly running out of HP, Loex farms up, fires off the Hydro Cannon before the opponent's able to debuff our defence. Hydro Cannon certainly gets them low enough where the next Hydro Cannon will be knocking out Loex, coming from behind but able to pick up the dub. Another very well played game, GG's and thanks for playing. Heading into the next battle, we see Kanto Mark into Gudra. A pretty neutral matchup. You're going to see Mark very, very bulky in the Ultra League. These Dragon Breaths aren't doing all that much damage. Gudra does have the pace and advantage in this matchup. It takes the equivalent of six Poison Jabs to each Aquatel, whereas we're going to have to go for the more expensive Dark Pulse to hit the neutral. Low X fires off the Dark Pulse, getting Gudra into the yellow. The opponent doesn't opt to throw, so Low X just going to fire off the resisted Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch isn't lethal, but the opponent is going to be forced to dump their energy. Once again, Low X has put this thing into a perfect farm down range for Gator to come in and get a very nice run in start. Gator gets the farm down and the opponent, uh, okay, is going to concede the match. In the next battle, we see Kanto Mark picking up a nice lead against Glissapod. The opponent is going to be able to fire off the liquidation. Liquidation doesn't debuff us, thankfully. Loex then farms up, fires off the Thunder Punch. Thunder Punch won't be lethal. We'll do a lot of super effective damage. It gets them into the red. Oof, we then see Loex make his first mistake of the video, playing to the CMP tie. I think if Loex was wanting to shield in this situation, we should have just shielded once and committed to the Poison Jab farm down. However, we've already seen that Loex has all the skills to pay the bills. Let's see if he pulls this one off. Out comes Skeledurge. We see the pivot into Gator, drawing out the opponent's own for Alligator. Loex really needs to start forcing some Protect Shield so Mewtwo can nuke that Skeledurge with the Legacy Shadow Ball. Speaking of which, there's the first Protect Shield. Loex going to be able to survive at least one more Hydro Cannon and we should reach our own. The opponent certainly doesn't need to shield, although it would be very nice if they shield for no reason whatsoever. Does this Hydro Cannon force the final shield? The opponent, clearly not a potato, knowing they easily survive that, not willing to invest the final protection. We send out Mewtwo, back out, comes Skeledurge. 
we're going to see Loex invest the final protect shield on the disarming voice. I think even disarming voice would probably knock us out with the incinerate damage. Loex fires off two cycle cuts and the side strike for optimal fast move timing. We managed to force the opponent's final protect shield. How we're about to get nuked with the shadow ball. It's now all down to Mark to clean up this battle. Loex able to outpace to the dark pulse. Can we poison jab farm down though? We're so, so low back out. Comes for alligator. No. Again, on quite literally one HP, the opponent reached the hydro cannon and we're going to take another heartbreaking loss. Heading into the next one. Canto Mark into the super spammy Greninja. The opponent fires off the Hydro Cannon, doing a solid amount of chip damage. But Undeterred Loex farms up, fires off the Thunder Punch. Again, obtaining us early shield advantage. Our backline doesn't particularly want to see this, although we do see the pivot into for Alligator to catch the Night Slash. This is by no means a good matchup for Gator whatsoever. Gator has climbed the ranks this season due to having access to Shadow Claw, but unfortunately Shadow Claw is going to be resisted by Greninja's Dark Typing. We fire off the Hydro Cannon. Hydro Cannon gets the opponent low, but you can see the resisted Shadow Claws unable to farm down before Greninja makes one further Night Slash. Greninja does take us out. We send out Mewtwo. Mewtwo gets a running start. The opponent then sends out Excadrill. The opponent running two Glass Cannons weak to fight in. That is some decision in a meta where Polyrath and Annihilate are very common. We then see the opponent make a very nice catch, catching the Shadow Ball onto Drapion. A very nice shiny as well. Both Shadow Ball and Psy Strike are single resisted. However, you always want to go Psy Strike in this matchup. Not only is Psy Strike better damage per energy or DPE, it also still does more raw damage due to the fact that it is such a busted move. Shadow Ball does around 35%, whereas Psy Strike does around 37 That's today's school lesson, so let's return to the commentary. Loex able to fire the Thunder Punch on the CMP tie. We send back up Mewtwo. Surely this game isn't winnable. For us to win this game, we're going to need a resisted side strike to knock this thing out. The opponent still with one protect shield, too hard behind. We're not going to be able to bait and reach the Shadow Ball. Loex fires off the next side strike on the CMP tie. This is resisted damage. Holy crap. Who was worried as side strike picks up the dub? In the next battle, we see the absolute dream lead. Trainer, why are you staying in? The only explanation is they have something else that doesn't fancy seeing Mark. They fire off the Surf, go for the Chip and Dip, and then send out Obstagoon. Speaking of Core Breakers, this thing is so bad for our backline. We fire off the Thunder Punch, go in for some Chip and Dip, and then send out Gator. But this is not a good matchup. Our quick move of Shadow Claw is quite literally going to be doing one damage per Shadow Claw as normal double resist Ghost and Dark also resist Ghost. Speaking of double resistances, Dark also double resists Psychic, so of course we couldn't come into Mewtwo as we'd get absolutely clapped. Loex looking to make the best of this poor situation, fires off the Hydro Cannon on the CMP tie, getting Obstagoon into the red. Today is the first time I've seen a regular for Alligator in action, and I'll be honest, I definitely opt for the Shadow variant. Not because I'm biased, I just think the damage output from the regular variant of for Alligator just doesn't quite hit hard enough. Loex does get rid of Obstagoon with a bit of a team effort. We then see the pivot into Mewtwo back out. Comes Tapu Fini. We fire off the side strike. Get that Tapu Fini out of here. The opponent now putting all the hopes and dreams on the back of Cresselia. Loex with a 2 to 1 shield advantage. Shields up the incoming Grass Knot. Loex then going to farm up. Again, looks to play to the CMP and he full sends the Shadow Ball. Does the opponent respect the damage? Sadly, the opponent does correctly shield up the Shadow Ball. However, Mewtwo is still going to land one. We shield up the Grass Knot. Again, Loex going to full send. We look to play to yet another CMP tie. This trainer just doesn't learn their lesson. Shadow Ball lands for absurd damage. So the only realistic win con for this opponent would have been to over farm and try and reach double charge moves. To be honest, even that isn't possible. As you could see, Loex did have the move bank. But regardless, it's always good to practice good habits. The opponent evidently very angry, rage quit the app, and we take that game. Heading into the next battle, we see Kanto Mark into Giratina. We've already seen in a previous battle that two Dark Pulses do knock this thing out. This is still not the worst matchup for Giratina. The opponent is going to strike first, fire off the Ancient Power, they then attempt to make a very nice Dark Pulse catch onto Guzzlord, which again is somewhat of a core breaker. We bank a boatload of energy and send out for Alligator. 
Our quick mover shadow claw is double resisted, but we do have that ice beam coverage, low X tunks the crunch, full sends the ice beam, ice beam forces the protect shield. If the opponent looks to the farm down, we will reach one further ice beam. The opponent throws at very nice timing. But low X willing to shield, just looking to get this Guzzlord lower. This ice beam won't be lethal. And to be honest, we really hope the opponent lets it go, which they do. Low X sends back out Muck, looking to operate as the damage sponge. The opponent fires off the crunch. Muck is so, so low. Oof, that was risky. We've got a lot of energy, but hardly any HP. The opponent sends back out Giratina. We're at the double dark pulse. The first one lands. Is the opponent willing to shield the next one? Yes, they are. It's now shield advantage Mewtwo versus the wild. Mewtwo very quickly going to be giving up that shield advantage. We shield at the Dragon Claw. The opponent then pivots out into Skeledurge. Low X going to fire off the Shadow Ball. Is a non-stab Shadow Ball enough to secure the knockout? Yes, it is. Get that Skeledurge out of here. Back out comes Giratina. And Mewtwo is going to land. Back to back booms. GG's and thanks for playing. Let's fucking go. A prime example of the ruthless power of Mewtwo. Our psychic type taking out back to back ghost types in the end game. In the next battle, we see Greninja in the lead. The last Greninja lead we saw was a big, big headache. Hopefully, this Thunder Punch lands, but Greninja users love to shield. Speaking of which, ask and you shall receive. We do land the Thunder Punch doing pretty much the majority of Greninja's health. The opponent fires off the Hydro Cannon, then pivot out into Skeledurge, getting a very nice snipe. Although the Skeledurge is going to very quickly be countered with Feraligatr. Low X comes in, fires off the Hydro Cannon on the CMP. So Hydro Cannon isn't lethal, but does leave him in the red. Likewise, no one move will knock us out. The opponent throw the Disarming Voice Bait. I have no idea why. They're only going to reach one move. A very questionable play. Back out comes Greninja. Greninja gets farmed down. The opponent's final Pokemon is Venusaur. We pivot into Mewtwo. And in the two shield, this is game over. We've got the pace and advantage. And we win CMP. Okay, it looks like Loex has other ideas. He wants his Feraligatr to be a Venusaur counter confirm. We're now going for a very risky Hydro Cannon bait. Hydro Cannon's called. No! Low X out here trying to give me an anxiety attack. It looks like we are going to reach the double Hydro Cannon. Hydro Cannon forces the shield. And this next Hydro Cannon is going to knock out. Oh, I've already lost my voice. And games like that certainly aren't helping. GG's. Heading into the final battle of the video. We see Kanto Mark into Galarian Weezing. A pretty decent matchup. The opponent at a potential overheat. This opponent full sends the OV and ouch that hurt. They then send out Verizian, which of course doesn't have a good matchup whatsoever into Muck. We then see the catch of the Leaf Blade onto Mewtwo, but that Leaf Blade did so much damage. Speaking of damage, I have no doubt this side strike will one shot if it goes unshielded. Unfortunately, it looks like we're not going to find out as the opponent does put up that protect shield. Loex is going to shield in return and we're going to reach this side strike on the CMP tie. Is the opponent winning to two shield Verizian in the mid game? They are not. Get that Verizian out of here. Back out. Comes Weezing. The opponent looks for the fairy wind farm down at Mewtwo. Refuses to die. Reaches one further side strike. Forcing the opponent's final protect shield. Loex could come out of either Pokemon. We actually opt to send up Mark and look to make an overheat catch. Did we catch the overheat? Yes, we did. What a play. The opponent's final Pokemon is Jellison. Unfortunately, we don't have Crunch, although just the Shadow Claw and Busted Hydro Cannon combination is going to start adding up on this Jellison very quickly. We see the instant No Shield deployed. Loex dares the opponent to throw the Shadow Ball. I cannot believe we survived that. For Alligator coming in clutch, fires off the Hydro Cannon. It's now all down to Mark. We send it back out. Fire of one Poison Jab and the Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse secures the knockout, and this should be plain sailing from here. This Thunder Punch isn't going to do all that much damage. But the opponent is going to need to double up. Because we still got a Protect Shield to hide behind Loex. Just going to shield up the incoming Brutal Swing. Return Fire with the Thunder Punch. And that is going to be all she wrote. GG's and thanks for playing. Huge shout out to new content creator Loex. Go check him out because he is so entertaining. Loex did actually send me I think 16 battles. Unfortunately I wasn't able to get through them all. As my voice is very sore. And I need to go to Night Shift tonight. So I need to save my voice. 
However, if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button. If you're new, consider subscribing. If you like your battles featured on my channel, a link to my battle submission form is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.